When we gather together, uh, I want Dana and I both want everybody to feel right at home. We want you to be comfortable. Uh, you know, we want you to have liberty, but be mindful of the ministers that travel for many miles. Yes. And our time is critical. <coughs> and I want to just establish that uh, the days of an open pulpit, they're not, <laughs> they're not here anymore. No. Uh, for one thing, we just, uh, in our flesh, we're not mature enough. So, if you have a word from the Lord, Dana and I both just ask that you would kind of filter that through us. Because the Lord has given us this responsibility to oversee and facilitate these meetings and even our normal services. So, if the Lord has given you a word, please run that by myself or Dana. Or in, and even the the guest ministry that we're hosting here, which I think we all know who that is. So anyway, but so with that being said, we just want to have a good time in the Lord, but we want it to be more than just a good time. It's a critical time. I can't stress that enough. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's just uh, let's stand for a moment if you're able to. And let's just go to the Lord in prayer and just ask His blessings over these meetings. I know that pe the Lord spoke to me that people are going to be healed. Yes. That carnal minds, hallelujah, are going to be eclipsed, hallelujah, with the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you want a revelation, there's not a greater revelation. Hallelujah, then for Christ to be revealed, yes. unveiled, Hallelujah. full disclosure, nothing Thank hidden. Right. And it's a place where the flesh can't stand. Hallelujah. See, Thank you, when Father. we go behind the veil, we have to go behind clean. Yes. If you don't, you'll be drug out with the meat hooks. Right. Hallelujah. Right. Father, we just come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We lift right now as one body. Hallelujah. We lift this service to you, God. We commend it into your hands, Father. Hallelujah. Do with us what your will is, what your purpose is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Cleanse our thoughts. Cleanse our minds. Hallelujah. Give us clarity. Hallelujah. Give the ministers precision of speech like a surgeon with a scalpel. Hallelujah. Implanting and imparting that word that will bring forth much fruit in our lives. Father, we pray for the worship. Hallelujah. That it would flow. Hallelujah. That it would be more than just lyrics on an overhead and chords on, a, on an instrument. Hallelujah. But it would be the very word of the Lord flowing out of the throne room of God. All these things in your name, Jesus, we pray. And the body said, Amen. Let's worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
hallelujah, see, the reason I don't have a problem with this song because I realize it's transitional. I heard somebody say we shouldn't sing that song anymore. Hallelujah. But if you don't realize where you came from and where you are, see, you can't touch this thing. Hallelujah. Until we die. That's right. So woe is me. Hallelujah. I realize when I try to touch it, I'm unclean. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he cleanses our lips. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woe is me. Hallelujah, Eleanor. For I'm unclean. For my eyes have been unveiled. Hallelujah. And I've seen the holy king. He's removing flesh. And he cleans.
voice to the Father. Hallelujah. Can you do it without music? Hallelujah. Can you do it without lyrics? caterpillar and the locust have taken away and I will bring forth a people made in my image made in my likeness to rule and reign with me a thousand years they will come from the devastation to the restoration they will be called by my name and I shall be their God for thou hast come out from them among them that were something else and you have been called by my name to be perfect. Yes. You've called, you've been called, you've been called, yes. you've been called. Yes. And I ask you today, arise yes. and shine. Yes. Let your light come for the glory Hallelujah. of the Lord is risen upon oh, you. Yes. 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 Thank you yes. Thank you, yes. There's a man, he's standing on the river, and he's proclaiming life unto both sides. He is dressed in garments made of linen.
Sounds bad, but I can be rough on a person, yeah. you know. So my kind of joking, you know, people get offended really easy. So it takes a certain type of person to, you know, roll with me. And uh, my wife obviously is good at that. She's been rolling for 18 years. Um, but uh, I was trying to figure out how hard 
God wants me to hit y'all. <laughs> Hallelujah. And uh, you know, so we're gonna go with a little poke between the eyes, I guess. And uh, I try and and I'm a serious person. I used to be a lot more fun to be around, but I've become, you know more serious about what it is God is doing, yes. especially in my life, you know, and I've gone through a lot of uh, various amounts and degrees of pain and suffering within my mind and my body and my spirit as God is educating me as I go through this walk, this progressive walk, yes. and uh as it is na a narrowing walk, look at yourself going, have you ever seen what they put coffins into that incinerator? View that, but as the flames on both sides are narrowing, as you move forward through that, you are burning up. Yes, sir. Everybody get that yes, sir. mental Amen. picture? Yes, sir. So that is... Everything you hold dear and you love about yourself and you think is so great, that's all gone. That's right. You know, that's, I mean, it's pretty much worthless. Um, you know, how you view yourself. Um, I tend to put a little color in my beard, you know, so it's not so gray. I like to view myself a little bit younger than, you know, than being older. All that really doesn't matter, you know. Uh, that's, I mean, that's just putting it real basic. And I know y'all know that your appearance means nothing. But I really want you to hear what I'm saying. How you are perceived, how you think you're perceived, and how other people perceive you. All that doesn't matter either. So get rid of all of your hang-ups. Right. What you think that person's thinking about you. Right. What you think someone else thought about you getting up here and ministering Amen. out. Amen. Doesn't matter. You know why? <laughs> because I'm not here to make friends. How do y'all feel about that? Does, does that like stir you? Does that make does that make you mad at me? No. Does that make our conversations back and forth that were intimate null and void? No. Right? No. I'm not here to make friends with That's you. Right. I don't even want to be here. <laughs> I I didn't want to drive all the way. I didn't want to wake up at four o'clock in the morning and drive those hours over here to be here. I could find something better to do. My fleshly man can find something yeah. better to do. So why are we here? You know, why is my spirit man standing before you bumbling? You know, and it's because that this is such a critical time yes. in God yes. that we really have to get rid of so much bull Amen. that Amen. we're dealing with in our minds. Yes. That we're letting other people affect us. Oh, no. And when I tell you I'm not here to make friends, you really need to consider that and what you let come affect you yeah. in your spirit. Man. Yeah. You really need to start recognizing, even though they're family, you need to keep them away from it. Amen. Wow. Because if they're not doing anything good, God has them. He's a part of their plan. Right. You being stuck into that, underneath that, bound by that, trapped by that, chained by that, uh -huh. that is not God's plan. That's your mental problems right. dealing with that. Yes. Does everybody get that? Yes. Yes. Sure. So you see where we're going with this. We're dealing with our issues. And whether or not we're all hearing God, we're all here doing what God really wants us to do. Now, we all heard that this was going to be a great, fabulous meeting. 
and don't miss it. And there's some empty seats, so apparently some people missed it. But the ones that showed up, good on you. But even out of the ones that showed up, some of y'all still are not going to hear Amen. what needs to be heard today. Yes. You still have your ear tuned to what was working for you yesterday. I'm all yes. You see what I'm saying? Yes. And, you're, and you're trying to operate in that. And I would imagine, and I've seen disgruntled people in that. Do you understand? Yes. Like, you're figuring, you're you're asking yourself, what? I mean, why would you do that? Why? And I won't give an example, but you know, you look at somebody you're like, why are you doing that? Do you? I mean, it's pretty clear to me, don't do that. Right. But people are doing it anyway. Yeah. And you're like, I don't get it. What in your mind, thinking that this is so critical? Are you going to waste my time on. talking about nonsense? Come on. You tune into something, you want to give forth your time and effort into something, and you're really plugged in. Yes. You're there. Right. You are focused, ready to go, God. Yes. I'm yeah. ready to do it. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but I'm ready. That's right. And I'm looking in my perfume. And I'm trying to see everything that's coming. And I'm not sure where it's going to be coming from. Yeah. But I'm watching. Amen. Watching on the wall, waiting to see how God is going to move. Yeah. There are other people that have blinders on. They're focused, but they're narrowly focused. Right. And they're not seeing God's hand come forth. Amen. They're seeing it like, ah, oh, that hurt a little bit. That's got to be evil. <laughs> he gone, devil. You, you see what I'm saying? Yes. So they're confused in what they're seeing, and they're not seeing the new thing that's coming at them. That's right. And they're not understanding. A lot of us are not understanding. Yeah. What is that new thing? Right. Right. Yes, sir. But we know it's upon us, and we have to be critically focused on the Lord. That's right. And how we're moving into this new day and what we're what we're listening to yes. the yes. people that we're listening to oh, and yes. i and i we're all ministers yes. everybody understand that please yes. you're all ministers Amen. Amen. we're all ministers yes. <laughs> you have a lot to do you're you're you have the training that you can stand on your own two feet and you don't have to look at him to say, is that right? And I think you already know that. Right? You're full grown now in the Lord. Make those decisions and go with your heart and what he's speaking with you. Let me see if I can rope this back in and get out of here. Maybe Bless not. Lord. We're all all ministers, and we're all moving or trying to move in the Lord and what He has for us today. And there are so many things coming against us. Yes, sir. Our own bodies, yes. family, circumstances. Right. And I'd like <laughs> you can't even. And, and keep a straight face and say the devil's after you. You know what I mean? Uh, I can't. I just sit there and look at someone and just start laughing. Like, I mean, I didn't grow up in the church world, but I would not give something as great as our God. I would not give such a power to that entity. You know what I mean? It gets unleashed in your life to do the Lord's bidding. I was not joking, kind of joking with someone, and I said, you know, suffer in silence. I'm tired of hearing you whine and complain. This is the Lord's will concerning you. Get in there and deal with that. You know, you're going to have to walk this out, obviously. 
You know, it's it's upon you. You know, you're not going to pray your way out of this. This is the Lord's will concerning you. Deal with that. That's right. I can't counsel. I mean, God bless Darren. God bless Darren and Dana. You know, I'm sure she's getting the phone calls too. You know, you can't counsel people up out of this thing. This is your individual relationship dealing with God and Him dealing with you so you can be in the place that He needs you to be in. To go after that one. You know what I'm saying? That one time He needs you to do your thing you got to be ready for it. And, it. and if it's just to say, hey, how you doing? You know, Jesus loves you or something like that. You know, you good? Good, all right. You know, no, I'm not good. I'm thinking about suicide. Oh, well, don't do that because that's bad. You know, there's a lot more for you than just checking out. That may be that one time that you were put in the way of something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's all that... That's all God needed for. That was you plugged into the plan to make it happen. Right. Have fun with the rest of your life. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or you're going to lead that sacrificial life. That's right. You're going to go after that excellence. That's it. Climbing that ladder of excellence. Excellence. Yes. yes. Being the best elitist that you possibly can. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Sabrina's the only one, and Dana's the only one that was laughing about that. <laughs> You are an elitist, and if you're not, you're doing it wrong. Because this is between you and God and the best that you can do. And nothing, nothing is going to stop you. Everything has to be beneath you. And that makes you an elitist, right? Because you're rising up higher than all this other junk. This hearsay, this whatever, these other people, your family money issues, you're rising up, you're climbing that ladder of excellence, you are an elitist. And if you don't think of yourself as an elitist, you probably should. You're thinking less of yourself. You need to overcome and constantly do that. And that's what elitists do. That's what overcomers do. They take a bad situation, they resolve themselves to get through it, and they make that happen. And what they are at the end of that is what God's will is of, is for you. That's right. And then the next day happens and you do it all over again. Yeah. And it never stops. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You're continually going to be tested every bit of this walk. That's right. yes. And it's God every day doing it to you. Yes. And th- he's trying to show you all the funk inside you that you need to get rid of. That's right. Yes. Right. Is that too harsh? No. no. We're not friends, right? I don't want to make any friends because I don't want to give you the wrong idea that this is a harsh word. Everybody, harsh word. I love you guys. You know, I made the statement last night about uh, not being afraid to use certain words. You got me, Russ. That's my, my you know, when he words. said that, <laughs> that elitist, uh, because that's, a, that's become an ugly word, but yet our military, they have certain branches of the military yeah, right. that are elite. That's right. Yep. Yep. And there ain't nothing wrong with being elite. Pick on my brothers and sisters for a minute natural I would get accused oh he's Mr. Perfect he does no wrong and I despise that but I learned to embrace it because I didn't I wasn't taking it I was taking it as an insult the truth of the matter is before we came here we were already friends so that does not have to be established otherwise we wouldn't be here that's right it's our relationship we have in common with God that is uh, the crux to the matter today and all throughout these meetings and so let us rise to that occasion 
I was thinking about the way Sabrina opened up the service, and I was led as uh, I was hearing uh, Russ speak. And we're going to get Gary up here in just a second. Uh, let me clarify that, Gary Gatlin. <laughs> um, and I know he's got a word for the body. Hallelujah. But as I was listening, and, and Russ was talking, the scripture came to me, and I was reminded of it. The scripture tells us to be a debtor to no man. Yeah, yeah. Amen? Amen. And you don't owe me anything, and I don't owe you anything. All I'm obligated to do is love you. Yeah. You need scripture for it, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> Let me see here. I'm going to read the scripture, and then we're going to get Gary up here to wear this thing out. Amen. Father, we just thank you, Jesus, for this, this time with you today, Lord. We thank you for your goodness and your mercies, for they endure forever. Romans 13, in verse 8, says, Remain debt free. We have became a culture in ministry where we have... I'm with this one, and I'm with that one. The truth of the matter, God's bringing us to a day to where he's uh, eradicating all those uh, walls, all the division, and we have to learn to respect each other where we are and where God's brought us to in the way that he is using us to bring forth this word, just like Russ did today. The only thing we owe the world is our love. Right. This is the essence of the law. I'm reading a different translation, but that's fine to have that up there. Love makes it impossible for you to do anything other than because if if you if I love my wife, I'm not going to do anything to offend her. Amen. I'm not going to do anything to disrespect her. Because I love her. And so I don't have to try not to commit adultery. I don't have to try not to do this or do that because of the nature of Christ that is in me, that is love. His love compels me. And His love today has compelled us to step into a higher place in Him. Yes. Where no dragons abide. Yeah. See, Hallelujah. in the lower realm, there's dragons. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he's taken us to a place where no dragons do abide. Right. Glory to God. And he's bidding you to come higher. Yes. Can you take me higher? Yes. Hallelujah. Can we go higher? Yes. Can you take me higher to a place where blind men see? You got it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's welcome Gary Gatlin to this pool. <laughs> Gary, <laughs> to you. you glad for Jesus? Yes. Three of you. I said, aren't you glad for Jesus? Yes. There you go. Amen. Before we get started, I want to uh, tell the camera my wife is watching, and I want to tell my beautiful wife, Paula, I love you and I miss you, and I wish you were here. Let's give a little hand for my beautiful wife, Paula. She wanted to be here, but she got some kind of a bug, and she got real sick and weak, and she couldn't travel. But she said, I really hate not being here. Amen. What a great time in God this is. Amen. Amen. How many believes that we're in a very, very serious time in God right now? Yes. Yes. Now, I know we've yes. said that a lot over the years. But I'm talking about folks just getting down to the nitty gritty. Yes, sir. And you guys have heard me say this before. Jesus said, straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leads to life. Uh -huh. That word narrow in the Greek literally translates narrow wing. Meaning, the more you walk with God, the more narrow it gets. And uh, 
I just want to say some things here uh, before we get started. For those of you that still believe in the Bible, uh, you can turn with me to uh, Luke, the fourth chapter, and the 17th verse. We'll get there eventually. But I wanted to say some things. We're in a time, amen, when it's very necessary and critical to hear God. More so than ever. For man does not live by bread alone, but by every word. When you understand, and, and, and I, I came to this understanding myself, and I've been pretty much healthy my entire life, outside of migraines and a few things of that nature, but I've been very healthy. But last, for those of you that don't know, last November, I went through a, an incident, uh, Gary, where I, I was about dead and didn't know it. I had no clue. I, uh, no pain, I had no nothing, I, everything was just great. I got up one morning, about 3 o'clock-ish, I guess it was, to go into the restroom, and when I come back out, I'd walk about 10 or 15 feet, and I mean, all of a sudden, I was as drunk as a skunk. I mean, I couldn't hold my balance, I reached out, grabbed a chair to hold myself up, and I took the chair with me all the way to the floor. My wife heard it, jumped out of bed, runs in there, and, and uh, I said, well, I'm okay, and I went to sit down for a while. Didn't do much that, it was on a Wednesday, didn't do much that day. Thursday morning had a repeat of the same thing. And uh, this time I fell on some carpet and stuff, so my wife didn't hear me. I crawled over to the couch and sat there a while and kind of regained my strength. And I had a brilliant idea. I said, I'm going to take a shower. I'll feel better. Way to go. So, Tony, I, I, I got up and went into the shower, and it takes our shower a while to get warm. And I thought to myself, Connie, I thought, well, if I, if I stand here too long, I might get dizzy again because these spells have been hitting me. Still no pain, no nothing. And I stepped into the shower, and the last thing I remember was, wow, this thing's cold. <laughs> and next thing I know, I don't even know how long I was there, my wife woke me up. I was laying on the floor, fell out of the shower, busted my head, had 50. Seven or eight stitches, whatever it was, I can't remember now. Staples. And uh, the doctor, the, the uh, emergency room doctor, they, she had to, my wife had to call an ambulance. And the emergency room doctor, the surgeon, and the nurses, the surgical nurses, they all told me, they said, we have never seen anybody come into the emergency room with, your, with the, the blood count that you had that was not in full cardiac arrest. It had dropped to a four. And you're supposed to have between 10 and 12. And that's when God began to deal with me and let me know you're alive because I need you here. There you go. That's why you defeated death so long ago. Amen. And I begin to realize, oh no, I begin to realize my life is not my own. Now we say that, but we really think, you know, God's here only to counsel us. Anybody know what I'm talking about? God's only here to counsel us. And if we need help, we'll ask Him. Otherwise, we got it. It's not that way at all. No. We're alive because of God. Period. Not because you eat right. I'm not saying don't eat right. If you like Twinkies like me, eat them. And all of these things. You're alive because of God. Period. And there's a purpose in God for that. Now, having said, I'm saying all this for a reason. We're in a serious time in God, people. Serious time. And everything you think is not God. Amen. That's one of the problems I've had dealing with people all these years. Now, God can use you to prophesy. He can use you to give a word of, of knowledge or, or, or uh, encouragement or whatever. That doesn't mean your next thought is God. God used a donkey. The donkey didn't go around prophesying after that. No, I'm losing everybody. I'm saying all this for a reason. Now, stay with me. I'm, this isn't even what I'm going to preach on. But having said all that, here's what the Lord began. We, we all, everybody, I don't care who you are, we feel like we're hearing God, walking with God, and what we know, what we believe is correct. It's God. Let me rephrase that. Is there anybody here believes a lie and you know it? I rest my case. <laughs> Having said that, we 
we want to jump on the Pharisees and the Sadducees and all of these other people because they didn't know Jesus. They didn't believe Him. They didn't understand Him. But you know what? Every one of them thought they heard God and they were doing the best they could do to follow God. But their eyes and their heart was blinded. Now we are in a time where it behooves us to walk circumspectly, hear God. Just because you get a thought, don't jump up because it ain't God. Come on. Come on. Come on. It's a good thing you said that you said the president, Russ. We we won't make no friends today. <laughs> That's it. Now I want to I want to get into something to, to, if I can for a little bit this morning. I'll try not to be lengthy. Well, it's afternoon now. Let's take your time. But I want us to hear God. We're in a time where God wants us to move into a higher place in Him, where there's a life flow of an anointing. Yes. Now, having said that, Jesus told the people, He said, the poor you have with you always. Yes. And I know raising up through old Pentecost, everybody thinks that's dollars and cents. Yeah. No, it's people with no cents. Amen. <laughs> I can see it bouncing. <laughs> no, it's people that have no discernment or no understanding. Yes. Right. Yes. And it's necessary that there are those that God has in this day and hour, that He's put a mantle on that you hear God yes. like never before. Is this okay? I hope I'm yes, not offending yes, anybody, but if I do, that's really too bad. Okay. All right. Because this is, this is the day of God. This is the day of God. Amen? And had Jesus not done what He did, the, the three and a half years He ministered on earth, there would have been people not being healed. There were people not being delivered or set free or raised from the dead or whatever. But he had to go in there knowing he was going to be misunderstood. Come on. Because his word, his own hand picked disciples didn't even understand him the majority of the time. But he said this way of life is getting more and more narrow. Now I'm going to make a statement here, and you can do whatever you want to. This time next year, there probably won't be some of you with us. That's right. Is that okay? That's right. Because God's filtering out. Some will cross over. Some will just be mad. But it's okay. Now the Lord spoke this to me. And I'm going to get over here into the Luke, the fourth chapter here. And uh, we're going to read something here. Starting at verse 16. The Lord spoke to me and He said, Jesus was the resurrection before He was the resurrection. I don't know if that even makes any sense to anybody. How do you know that? He wasn't the resurrection, according to our understanding, until resurrection morning. But the Bible said in John the 11th chapter, He told Mary and Martha, I am. Yes. Yes. Is this okay? Yes. Yes. Alright. I'm going to mess with you this morning for a little bit or today, whatever it is. Luke 4 and 16. And this is what God has been impressing on my spirit so much. We're walking in a time, folks, when God is going to mess with your flesh. What does that mean exactly? That means your ego. Is this okay? Your ego, your hopes, your dreams. The Lord has, uh, and those of you that's been following us on a Tuesday night on the evening in Paris, Heaven's on Fire. Amen. You know that song that uh, a friend of ours from Cross Plains, Texas, Faith Simon, she's crossed over a few years ago. But that, the words of that song, Heaven's on Fire. And what God is doing, He's burning up your heavens. Yes. Yeah. What is heavens? Your ideas of God. That's, right. That's where that word actually came from. It's whatever your ideas of God is. He's changing that, He's burning them up, and He's changing them. Yes. Otherwise, you're going to have a Pharisee view of God. Yeah. Yeah. You have to know Him and be changed by Him. And, and the Lord quickness in my spirit, and I want to give it to you real quick. How many loves Revelation? Two of you, okay. The rest of you don't have to listen. How many loves Revelation? There you go. Okay. The word Revelation, what does it mean? It means an unveiling. We like that, don't we? Well, guess what? The Lord spoke this to me. Revelation not only unveils God to you, but it unveils you. It unveils you. And we don't want to be unveiled. I want to keep my secrets. I want to keep my thing. But God says, you want revelation? Get ready to be revealed. I will take you as deep as you want to go. 
God says, I'll take you as deep as you want to go, but you have to be totally naked and bare before me. Yes. Right. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Absolutely. Uh, uh, man, I'm feeling this. So, yeah. Hang Come on. on. Come on. Look at this. And he came to Nazareth where he'd been brought up. Yeah. And watch this next phrase. And as his custom was. He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. Why? It was his custom. Yeah. That's what he did. How many of y'all go to church and these kind of meetings and services all the time? You know why? It's your custom. It's what we do. We think we're blessing God by doing this. Oh, hello, Walt. And I want, I want you to see this. Let me get on with this. I'll be here all day if I'm not careful. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, he hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach the deliverance to the captives, and recovering of the sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Now for those of you that's read the book of Isaiah, you know that's not the end of that chapter. That's right. Yeah. The beginning. That's at the very first. Thank you. Yeah. It's at the very first few verses. But he closed the book. And I want, I want to get to something here in just a second. Can I tell you something? If you look at all those verses I just read that Jesus was reading, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. For He has sent me. And He's anointed me to do these things. But when you get into the book of Isaiah, now please understand, Luke 4, 20 said, and he closed the book. Why? Because he was changing the order. Yes. That's right. Yes. If you'll get on to these other verses in the book of Isaiah, it changes from a me and an I to a we. Yes. God said, I'm changing the order of this thing. Yes. Amen. Watch this. He closed the book. He gave it to the minister, sat down, and the eyes of, of all them... Uh, in the synagogue were fastened on him and he began to speak. Now watch what he said. This day. Yes. Now I want to tell you guys something today. This day. Yes. This day. This is, this is not just another meeting. If you came here thinking you're going to get your flesh blessed, you're probably in the wrong spot. Amen. Amen. Now I'm not saying that we're not going to feel something. You're not going to feel the doodads and your hair standing up. You probably feel all that stuff. That's not what this is about. Amen. Amen. Getting your body healed is good, but that's not what this is about. Right. Right. There's too many people with healed bodies that are broken spirited. Yes. Right. That are messed up. Amen. We need a whole thing. Body, yes. soul, and spirit. Yes. And he said, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. They were all, even going down, they marveled at how the gracious words fell. And then, guess what? They all got mad at it. Want to kill him. Something began to take place there. Can I tell you something? We come in here because we think this is a custom. This is what you do. We have found a formula for getting God to move. Right. If I go to church and somebody can preach or sing or prophesy or this or that, then God will touch me. Yeah. Or maybe I can get a word. Or maybe I can this or maybe I can that. And we're missing the whole point of what God's trying to do. And you'll always have those people that will do that, and that's fine. But I'm not talking to those people today. I want you to understand something. The Bible said when Jesus came to be prophet, when he came to be baptized, there, uh, John the Baptist, his cousin, was going to baptize him. Remember that? Uh, we know the story there. He came, and he got baptized, come up out of the water, and for the first time in over 400 years, God spoke. For the first time in 400 years, God said, This is my beloved son. God had spoke to a human being in 400 years. This is my beloved son. And the Bible says, Some thought it thundered. Yeah. 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 Never did hear. They didn't hear God. That's right. They thought it thundered. And in a group as precious as this group is here today, and even those that might be watching, I'm here to tell you some will think it's thundering. Some only want to hear and be blessed in their flesh. Yeah. And I'm sorry, but I'm not up here. I didn't come here this weekend to bless your flesh. Amen. I'm here to tell you this day. 
That's right. Is it fulfilled in your hearing? Now, what upset Jesus, the, the, the people with Jesus so much was this. According to the history of the Jewish temple, and please understand, this was a custom. There were three chairs up in the front. And whoever was going to speak that day would get up and they would ask the minister, which was really just someone that, that watched over the scrolls of the Bible and, uh, of that day for them. They would ask for a certain Bible or a certain passage or whatever. And that minister would hand them what they wanted. And he gave him the book of Isaiah. Then what you would do is you would read your text. And then you would sit down in the right chair or the left chair. But nobody, according to Jewish custom, nobody sat in the middle chair. That's right. That was only reserved for Messiah. Messiah. Nobody, it was blasphemy to sit in that middle chair. That belonged to Messiah. And I'm going to take a little step further here. Even today, even today, uh, in, in those practicing Jews over in Israel, even today, they have a deal where they'll leave an empty chair and a plate uh, on their Passover. They'll leave it at their table, and it's only only for a certain one. That's right. That's right. So people still don't understand. He comes in there, and he had the Bible said it was his custom. He had read to them before from the scriptures. He had taught them in days gone by from the Scriptures. That was his custom. That's what he did. And up until now, he would sit in the right chair or the left chair. And he would expound to them the glorious uh, uh, things of the treasures of God. And he would give them this beautiful stuff. But on this particular day, and here's the thing that, that I'll be honest with you, it makes me a little nervous when I think about some of this. We have been so accustomed, uh, Brother Dave, we have been so accustomed to people saying all the various catchphrases that we say of the kingdom of God message, amen, that we become callous to the things of God. Amen. We say there's a new thing coming and we go, yeah, I've heard that before. Yeah. We say, God's fixing to do something new. I've heard that before. Yeah. I've got tapes and CDs from 20 years ago where they were saying that. Yeah. And we come to the point that we're just like everybody else. Now, please understand something. Everybody that was in that synagogue that day, they were educated, well-trained, and well-versed. And they believed for hundreds and hundreds of years, Messiah is coming. Yeah. Messiah is coming. They were taught that. They were educated that. And they believed that. So whenever uh, uh, you started talking about, guess what? Messiah is coming. They would all say, that's true. Yeah, he's coming. He's coming. And when Jesus would teach on it, yes, he's coming. But on this particular day, something began to change in the spirit. And I'm here to tell you, some of you right now, no doubt, are sitting there thinking, yeah, we've heard this kind of stuff before. And I'm here to tell you, you're the ones hearing the thunder. Amen. But I want you to hear God today as He said, I'm taking this place to a new level, Darren. And Dana, I'm taking it to a new, new place in the heavens. Amen. This day, things are being full. Field. It's no longer a prophetic word. It's no longer a thus saith the Lord, I will some glad morning. But this is something God's going to do here and now this weekend, Brother Dave. Amen. Those of you that come in here, I want you to hear this. Amen. He said, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your hearing. Amen. If you can hear me, you're being changed. All the very likeness of God himself. He's changing us. Amen. It's not something you prayed for. It's not something you... We don't have enough sense to hope for this stuff or pray for it. My God, if we did, we'd run as hard as we could. You know why? Because He's going to hurt your feelings. Amen. He's going to mess with your life. Amen. Those of you that's got all your uh, house in a white picket fence, God's fixing to mess with you so bad, it ain't even funny. Amen. Why? It's not because He don't want you to have those things. It's because He wants you. He wants your heart. He wants your life. He wants your spirit. Oh, hallelujah. He got up there every single day. I can just see him now. Amen. So kind of like some of us sitting here today. Jesus gets up there. That's Joseph's son. Yeah. He's a good guy. What would he know? Yeah. Matter of fact, <laughs> my phone keeps going to sleep. <laughs> I think my phone is saved because it keeps going to sleep. <laughs> and they said, 
Is this not Joseph's son? Look at the next verse, 22. We know him. My kids went to school with him. We know Joseph. He's a good guy. Did good. Did good with Jesus. Kind of some funny stuff going on between him and Mary, but there's some funny stuff. He, you know, Jesus had brothers, had brothers and sisters. Yeah. I can see them now. Just another just another church service. Yeah. Kind of like right now. Amen. Some of you, it's just another church service. Amen. But some of you, yes. Come on. God's got you. Hallelujah. Yes. Some of you, God's got you. Hallelujah. Honey, God's got you. Amen. Oh, can we hear this? Hallelujah. Isn't this Joseph's son? Yes. Oh, I, I can see some of you come to church now. Well, I really hope Joseph's son gets up. <laughs> I like him. Yeah. I like him because he ain't long winded. Yeah. <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. That's Joseph's son. Yeah, yeah, yeah he, he's a good guy. But what is he doing sitting in the middle chair? Oh, she lost his mind. <laughs> Nobody sits in the middle chair. <laughs> Hundreds of years, nobody sat in the middle chair. Oh my God. Hallelujah. People Hallelujah. missed it. Yes. They wanted to kill him. The Bible said they became angry. Read it. Yes. They became angry and wanted yeah. to kill him. Yes. Why? Because he messed with their custom. Yes. Yes. Come on now. Yes. He messed with their custom. Mm -hmm. What are you saying? Jesus said, for the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Amen. For He hath anointed me. And He runs down the list. Then He says, as He handed back the scroll to the minister, He sits down. Yeah. And He said, instead of this big beautiful teaching and where He puffed up their minds and gave them some more. Can I tell you something? Hey Amen. we got a lot of folks that gets up and, and, and starts talking and all they do is give you information. Amen. Yes. That's it. Thank God for Greek and Hebrew and all that stuff. I like I, I like that stuff and Spanish and Chinese and all that. I like that. <laughs> but but I got to tell you, I got to tell you, it may, it's information. Yeah. It puffs up your head. Yes. Doesn't change you. No. Right. Doesn't give you life. Yes. It's no different. Somebody getting up here rattling off a bunch of information. It doesn't give you any more life than the math and the English and the science you learned in school. That's right. I hate to tell you that, but that's the truth. That's right. That's right. But God is speaking a word now, and He's saying, guess what? This day, yes. this day is this fulfilled in your hearing. That's right. what, is, what does that mean? That means this. You don't have to hope anymore. That's right. Amen. It's been fulfilled. Yes. There's some changes taking place. Yes. So I'm going to give you a word. Don't be surprised when He starts rearranging your house. Yes. 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 Setting things in order. And, and let me just say this. I, I, God help me. I don't want to make anybody mad, but it's probably too late. <laughs> Russ already, already teed it up for you. Thank you, sir. I'm going to blame this on Russ. <laughs> We're all ministers. I believe Russ said that. We're all ministers. Amen? Amen. But, we're not all pulpit ministers. Right. Woo! Amen. It's like, oh God, help me. I shouldn't say this. I'm fixing to get ugly. <laughs> not me. I've gone to churches before. I've gone to churches before and they would get somebody up to sing a special, sound like a cat in a trash can. <laughs> and people come up to them after church and say, oh, that's so beautiful. I'm going, are you crazy? <laughs> that was awful. <laughs> what are you saying? Not everybody can sing. Amen. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> and I'll tell you something else. You might can sing beautiful, but if there's no anointing, it's talent. Yes. You can have talent and no anointing. 
Can I say that? Yes. Yes. We got a lot of people that sing beautiful, play an instrument beautiful. There's no anointing there. That's right. The anointing is what breaks the yoke. Yes. Right. It's what destroys the yoke. Yes. And when people come to the house of God, they come with yokes and they need that yoke broken. Yes. And we don't break it with beautiful music or singing. Yes. We don't break it by getting up here and giving information. Right. We break it by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Yes. You don't get to choose when that anointing comes. Right. Come you don't get to choose. You just do the best you can and God will meet you there and bless you and anoint you. Amen. When somebody, I tell you what, amen, I love that song. I love that song and, and the way that Darren and everybody sings it here. Uh, I saw the Lord. Yes. You know why? Because it's anointed. Yes, it is. And when they begin to sing that, I feel the anointing raise up and I can see chains being broken. It's not that it's so beautiful or not so beautiful or anything. It has to do with the anointing of God. People are hungry for the anointing. They're not hungry for talent. They're not hungry for entertainment or performance. And then we don't even want to get somebody up that might be an eloquent speaker. We want somebody that when they open their mouth, God comes out and the chains are broken wherever you are. I don't know about you, but I'm going to tell you what my desire is. My desire is that when I get up to minister, whenever that is, or even if I don't, honey, that as soon as the mouth is open, chains are broken. People are healed. People are delivered. People are set free. And nobody has to lay a hand on them. Only God begins to minister and flow. This is what this is all about. When he said, this day, this day is this fulfilled in your hearing. For the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. For he hath anointed me that I might preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And let you know everything else is being fulfilled in a priestly Melchizedek order. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Right. Is this okay? Yes. And we need to understand something. I want us to understand something. I, I, I tell you what, there's such a soberness in my spirit right now, I can't yeah. even express it well. Yes. Yes. Yeah. John, the 11th chapter, Lazarus had died. And because of that, Jesus shows up several days later, four days later, I believe it is. And He comes in to Mary and Martha. Lazarus' sisters. We know this story. And he says, uh, your brother's going to live again. They said, Lord, if you'd just been here, our brother wouldn't have died. Yeah. Why? Because we've known him as a healer. We've watched him heal. And that's like some of us. We know God in a measure. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And we cannot receive him any further because we only know Him as a healer. Yeah. We don't know Him beyond that. We know Him as an encourager. We know Him as somebody a day that we can talk to when we're in trouble. Or when we're lonely. Or when we're feeling sad or blue. We're somebody that, that we know we can go talk to Him and He will lift us up and encourage us. That's the God we know. But God says, I'm more than that. That's right. yeah. And we can understand that. Because nope. our heavens have been sealed. Yes. But that's why he says, I'm going to burn your heavens up. I'm going to burn your heavens up. I'm going to change what you know about me. Yes. Is this okay? Yes. I'm going to change what you know about me. Yes. And here's a here's a hard part. I don't have any trouble preaching to Baptists or Methodists or Pentecostals or anybody. You don't have trouble preaching to the kingdom people. Amen. You know why? They know everything. They know so much they scare God. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh my. Time's getting away from me. I gotta get going. And we know so much about God, we think we're experts on God. Yeah. And we don't realize that the only way God can can even move us at all is to burn our heavens up. Yes. Change everything that we know yes. about Him. That's right. Glory to God. Jesus said, Your brother will live again. Yeah, yeah, Lord. See, immediately they knew him as a healer. So they thought, you know what? Lord, you're right. My brother will live again. You're right. Got that. 
in that last day, that great res day of resurrection. Yeah, that, yeah. I'm with you, God. I'm with you, Jesus. We got that. Jesus said, I am. Yes. Yes. Now, please understand something. They didn't start talking in tongues or prophesying. No, they didn't. They didn't. They didn't believe him. No. Right. Oh, nobody wants to help Come on. Right. God says, I'm fixing to do a brand new thing. We're going, I got you, God. Yeah, matter of fact, 20 years ago, I got the tape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a new thing. It's true. It's new to all them people that don't know God like I do. Yeah. But I've been there. I know that. No. God said, I'm going to do something you've never known before. That's yeah. it. Hallelujah. That's it. Yes. There are those that says there is no new thing. And after all, did Solomon say there's nothing new under the sun? Amen. But as long as you live in an earthly realm, there is nothing new. That is right. But God spoke to him in the book of Isaiah and he said, behold, I do a new thing. That's yes. Right. Yes. You shall not know it. You don't know a thing about it. Because I ain't even created it yet. God help me. People think God created everything the seventh day he rested and he never done nothing else since. <laughs> Honey, God's a creator. He just keeps on creating. Keeps on creating. Matter of fact, the people of the science world know more about God than we do. Yes, sir. Uh, you talk to them and they say, you know what? We're finding out that there's universes being created yes. constantly out yes. there. Yes, yes, absolutely. They're finding it out. Our universe is ever expanding. Yep. Yes. God's creating constantly. Yes. Yes. You think your world is so uh, uh, to the point you don't need to expand anything with God? That He can't do nothing with you? I'm here to tell you, God's expanding yes, you. That's, right. Woo! That's why on this particular day, Reading from this particular scripture, doing as his custom was, because that's what he always did. They're expecting the same old sermon. Some of y'all come in here expecting the same old move of God. Yes. Come, on. come on now. That's right. You was hoping you could hear a new revelation without being revealed. Yeah. 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 Something to add to your notes. Right. And instead. What does he do? What does God do? Instead, the Bible says he sits down. King James don't tell you where he sat. All that they know is that he sat down as was his custom. That's what he did. That was his custom. He sat down to teach, to expound. The problem was he didn't sit where he always sat. That's right. Some of us need to understand God's not going to sit in your world where he's always sat. He's going to set in your world. Kim, he's going to set in your world and begin to change some things. Yes. There's an anointing upon you, young lady, yes. that God says to tell you, I'm about to raise you up like never before. Yes, I'm going to speak a peace into your spirit that has not been there. I'm going to settle some things for you. For my hand is upon you mightily. Get ready, hon. The hand of God's on you in a powerful way. Oh, hallelujah. While I'm at it, I'll just go ahead. Jason, I'm here to tell you, buddy. In the back row there. Jason, I want you to know, you, the Lord spoke this to me when I looked back at you a while ago, and he said, you tell Jason, enjoy it while he can, sitting on the back row. Because <laughs> God's got his hand on you, my brother. There's a heavy, fresh, new mantle resting upon your shoulders this weekend. You're not going to go back to Michigan like you came down. The hunger and the zeal of God is consuming you. For He said, I have need of thee. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you people, things are changing. Oh, hallelujah. Now, please understand something. When Jesus made that statement, when they made that statement, He sat down and He said, this day is that Scripture fulfilled in your hearing. When He made that statement, the only thing that people saw, the only thing they heard, and I like what uh, uh, Russ or Darren, one of them uh, said already this morning. We're, I think it's Darren. We're so busy thinking of what to say, yeah. we don't hear what's being said. That's right. Amen. That's right. That's true. We're so busy 
judging what I'm saying yes. compared to what you want to know. Right. That's right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Lord help us. Yeah. I'm going to tell you something. I, and I've had this happen to me several times in my 50 years of ministry. Is that I'd be up preaching and all of a sudden a weird thought hit my head. And I'm going, where'd that come from? The next thing I know, God's let me read people's thoughts. Yeah. And I don't like it. Right. <laughs> Amen. There ain't no money in it. No. I'm kidding you. For those of you that have no sense of humor. But we're so busy judging each other. Come on now. Well, he's saying this stuff and uh, I don't you don't quite bear witness with me. God didn't show me that. We would know God if He spit in your face. That's right. Oh, hello, walls. I lost my last two friends. Oh, hallelujah. I'm assuming you had two friends. I'm assuming I had two friends. I'm being generous here. Really generous. Oh, hallelujah. But we're so busy. Amen. Thinking of what to say or trying to justify ourselves. The reason I feel this way is because A, B, C, 1, 2, 3. And the reason I don't like you is because A, B, C, 1, 2, 3. And on and on and on. Everything. Every, every time somebody gets up and preaches, everybody's judging. How, how is that lining up with me? Is that good or not good? We don't hear what God's saying. We're too busy thinking of what we want to think. Yes. And I can see these people now on that synagogue on that Sabbath day, Brother Dave. I can just see them. They're sitting there and they're, they're happy because Joseph, is, his son, is one of them. Come on, it's his custom. He was there all the time. He wasn't a visitor. He can reach from Isaiah. Good word, Jesus. Good word. <laughs> I like Isaiah. Good word. Good word. Yeah, some of y'all even saying that right now. Good word, Gary. Good word. <laughs> hey, not a word I said all morning. Say it. Good word. I love. I know Gary. This happened to you too, and some of you, Darren, and some of you ministry. You know what I'm talking about. It's people come up to you after church and, "Woo, man, that was a great word. That was a good word." What I preach, I don't know. <laughs> but it was good. Yeah. <laughs> I just remember that. Even better, I like when they come up to me, Brother Gary, I really like you preach this, this, and this. And you're going, I do preach on that. <laughs> <laughs> you wonder what, what universe are they in? <laughs> Best message on healing I've ever heard. Yeah, yeah I've had them do that. I didn't preach on that. <laughs> and uh, anyway, but I can see them now. Yeah, Joseph, Joseph's son. That, yeah, yeah, Jesus did good. Isaiah, good, good. So far, check, check this. Joseph's son, check Isaiah. Yeah, we're good. Our checklist. We're gonna have a good service. Jesus got up, read Isaiah. Good service. He's gonna sit down and teach. Praise the Lord. From that point on, they didn't hear nothing he said because he didn't sit where he's supposed to. Come on now. As long as I'm preaching on something you agree with, I'll never forget this. Years and years and years ago, my mom's been dead a long time now. But I remember one time she was going through a really hard place, and I went to visit her, and she wanted to go to church. We went to this little Assembly of God church there in uh, in Dallas. And uh, we were there, and I'll never forget this. And I don't know, a couple hundred people there, I guess, 300 people. And you could tell, we, we were just visitors, but you could tell everybody in that church was pretty much long time Assemblies of God people. And I'm not knocking Assemblies of God. I'm just saying that's the church we were in. And I'll never forget. I'll never forget. They got up and boy, they started slamming, smoking, and drinking and cussing. <laughs> Going to hell. People were dancing and jumping and hollering and screaming and running around and praising God. And I told my mom, I said, who's the sermon for? <laughs> You're preaching to the choir here. Why? Because they were preaching something everybody agreed with. Right. Yeah. 
And if I get up here and preach how pretty you are and how wonderful you are and how great you are, I get all kinds of amens. Yes. Yes. But the first time I tell you that even your goodness has to be dealt with as well as your badness, I lose my amen. See, that tree of good and evil, we we, we got no problem with the evil. We were all for that. Yeah, amen, God, get him. Get them evil rascals. I'll help you. Drag them over here. I'll cut their heads off. But when God says, I'm going to get your goodness. Wait a minute, God. I spent a lot of time getting this good part perfected. <laughs> Surely you can use my good stuff. Because face it, God, you don't have near as far to go getting it right as on my evil side. <laughs> Is this okay? Yes. Good work. Surely God can use my good side because I'm nice to people I just soon slap. <laughs> Say amen, Russ. Amen. <laughs> I'm kind, I'm gentle, I'm all those things. Surely you can use that. And God says, sorry. That's still an abomination in my eyes still. That's right. Why? Because it's the root of the tree that I'm dealing with. That's right. Come on. Jesus said the axe is laid. Come on, help me, people. To the root of the tree. Has nothing to do with the fruit, good or bad. It's the root that's the problem. That's right. That's right. He's tearing down everything. He said, I will share my glory with nobody. So when the perfected person rises up in the spirit and you're mature in God, you cannot say, Yeah, I helped God. Right. I am where I am because God did this with my help. Everything, everything, everything about you, He's going to burn up. Yeah. Why? So He can give you beauty for ashes. Okay, let me get back to this real quick. I can't get, this thing's getting away from me here. So, they're sitting there. Praise God, Joseph's son He's doing good. I like it when he gets up. Today he did really good because Isaiah is a good book. But when he sat down, all of a sudden nobody listens anymore. Because he said this day, and please understand, when he said this day is this scripture fulfilled in your hearing, they didn't hear that. Why? Because he's sitting in the wrong spot. Who do you think you are? That's for Messiah. You're Joseph's son. How can you be the Messiah? We've got to understand something, folks. Every day, all day long, we wait for the appearing of the Lord. It's not a one-time thing. That's right. We want Him to appear constantly. Yes. I do. Amen. Amen. Amen? Here's the question. I'm going to try to start bringing this down. But here's the question. Why? Why do you want Him to appear? Some of y'all scared to answer me. Yeah. <laughs> the Bible said in the book of John that there were two men on the road to Emmaus. I'm going to try to quit with this. There are two men on the road to Emmaus. And they're walking along. The Bible said Jesus joined himself to them. And they did not know who he was. Can I tell you something? I'm going to guarantee you 99.9% .9 of the church world does not know him. They know a historical Jesus. They know Joseph's son. They know Mary's boy. They know, they know this, this somebody was crucified a couple of thousand years ago. They know that guy. Yeah. But they don't know who he is. Right. Not right. was. Right. Right. That's right. Amen. The Bible said he joined themselves to them and they did not know who he was. And so here they are. And I don't know about you, but said they were on the road to Emmaus. And if I can put it to you like this type of shadow, on the road to eternal life. We're all on that walk. Yes. We're trying to find. We're trying to find our way. Yes. That's right. And as we're trying to find our way, He joins Himself to us. Yes. We don't know Him. That's right. Amen. What's going on, fellas? Are you a stranger here? Is that what we say? Right. Yeah. Are you a stranger, Lord? 
I'm accustomed to Mary's boy. Who are you? I don't know you. Yes. Oh my. So here he comes. He begins to talk. Say, are you a stranger here? Haven't you heard? Three days ago, they killed this guy. We just knew he was Messiah. We just knew it. Come on now. We just knew he was Messiah. But they killed him. And I'm paraphrasing, but he said, basically, now we've got to start all over looking for Messiah. We thought that was him. But now we've got to find a new one. Because they killed this one. You know why? You know why they were looking for somebody? They weren't looking for Jesus to change them into the nature of God. They were looking for Jesus to get rid of the Roman bondage. Yeah. 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 Can I tell you a little secret here? That when I asked you earlier, amen, how many likes Revelation because it's a revealing of you? Yes. It's a revealing of me. It's a revealing. That's what it is. You want a revelation? God will give it to you, but it's going to uncover you in the process. Yes. That's right. Hallelujah. Yep. Amen. Now, having said that, having said that, I want us to understand that what God is doing right now is as we begin to look at this, He said, this is what I'm about to do. I'm about to uncover you, reveal myself to you in an intimate way. Yes. And in the process, there's going to be some changes begin to take place. It's not about... See, most of us, we want to be healed... But we don't want God to change our personality and our, our, our character and our nature. Amen. You know, I, I look back at all of those uh, healing campaigns of the 50s, 40s, 50s, and 60s. You know, old Roberts, A.A. Allen, and all the big guys, you know. And so many people were healed. How not miracles? And yet they were not changed. Right. They were just healed to get up and go do what they used to do. Yeah. God's not trying to do that. He's not trying to heal your body so you can go do your thing. He's wanting to change you from the inside out. Because that's where true healing comes from. And He's wanting to change us. Oh, hallelujah. I don't know if this is making any sense to you. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to quit. But I, I tell you what, I, I'm hearing the Lord say this this day, this day, is this scripture fulfilled. What does that mean? You're not going to be able to read the scripture anymore like that, like you used to. Amen. You're not going to be able to look at things like you used to. What happened? What happened? If you want to check that out, check it out. Because what began to take place, that was in Luke the fourth chapter. Shortly after that, you'll find out that almost everything Jesus did was against the laws of religion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. When he would heal somebody, it was on the Sabbath day. Yeah. When he did anything, Sabbath day. Yeah. Everything was an in your face thing. That's right. Yeah. <coughs> you know, the Apostle Paul wrote, he said, I knew a man about 14 years ago. Whether in the body or out, I don't know. But I knew a man. And I heard some things. Can we hear the sound? Yeah. Yes. I heard some things unlawful to utter. If I start telling you what I'm hearing in the Spirit, you're going to want to kill me. You're going to think it's heresy. You're going to think it's false doctrine. When Jesus sat that day in that middle chair, they thought it was in false doctrine. They wanted to kill Him. Only because God was fulfilling something in their midst and they missed it. The very ones that had the fishes and loaves in their mouth, the few chapters later said crucify Him. We don't hear God to the point we understand Him. We only judge it what we want to. And I'm saying this for a reason. God's looking for mature sons. Yes. Let there be mature sons. Yes. That word perfect means mature. Yes. What does it mean to be mature? To know the will of the Father. To have the nature of the Father. Yes. That Jesus, He put it this way. He said, I only do those things that I see my Father do. I only say those things that my Father says. 
Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. And i got to be honest with you. I know you guys are way more holy than I am, but I'm not there yet. Because I still some things that God's kind of shaking his head going, oh, brother. we got some work on this one. Y'all are going to be super holy. Come on, brother. We'll help you. Oh, hallelujah. See, the truth of the matter is, truth of the matter is, we strive and God sees the motives of our heart. And, and I, I was telling Darren this, this morning, I'll, I'll share it with the whole congregation here. I don't care what you do. I don't care what you say. God judges the heart. That's, right. That's, That's the truth. The motivation of your heart. Yes. What is it? You can say, well, I did all these nice things for so-and-so. What was your motive? Come on. Yeah. What was your motivation there? Yeah. You can be the nicest person in the world, but what's your motive? Right. Right. Because if it's not the motive of God, yeah. it's wrong. That's right. And that's part of the tree of good and evil. Well, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh my. Oh my my. I see some changes taking place in the house. Yes. Amen. In some personal lives. Yes. Folks, get ready. I'm telling you what, we, we're about to see some things because there's some things fulfilled today. That's right. Yes. There's some things fulfilled today. Yes. We're going to see God move in a supernatural way like we've never seen him before. Yeah. I'm not talking about something to make your hair stand up and make you feel all goosebumpy and, 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 and your little flesh get all tickled. That's not it. Yeah. You, can, you can come in here and you can, you can feel the doodads and you can feel happy and excited and your hair stand up. Walk outside. Just watch. You can do that in a nightclub. Some of y'all never been to a nightclub. Liars. <laughs> Truth of the matter is, amen. The only thing that, that I'm talking about is there be a change in the anointing of God. Yes. 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 So that when you leave here, you are not the same. That's right. You're not the same. That's right. And I'm not talking about you. And please understand something. When I'm telling you about change, how many is ready for change? Hallelujah. 8, 9, 10. Okay. Yes. How many is ready for change? Yes. How many, when I said that, in your mind you thought, the change that I want is what I want? Because that's what we mean. Because if I got a change that's against my grain and my nature, I'm going to pray about that. Because that's probably the devil. That's right. Come on now. See, we don't understand something. And I'm, going to try, I'm really trying to quit. But when we read that in the scripture about the wrath of God, uh, that word wrath actually means passion. Because yes. 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 God is love. Yes. Yes. And His passion, if I can put it to you this way, anybody got any kids here? Nobody? Anybody know any kids? <laughs> Wasn't there a time in raising your kids that you had to become angry? Yeah. Maybe spank them or yell at them or whatever it is that people do that they say they don't do? Yeah. <laughs> Are you with me? Yes. Okay. What made you do that? Your passion of love for that child. Yeah. Yeah. You yelled at them right before they stuck something in an electric socket. Yeah. Yes. Or you hollered at them or spanked them because they did something you knew was bad or hateful or hurtful or uh, could even kill them. Maybe they tried to chase a ball in the middle of the street or whatever. And you, you, your passion right. is your wrath. Yes. Yeah. It's expressed that way, but it's really passion. Yes. That's God. Yes. That's God. Yes. When He does all that He does for you and it's against your flesh, it's His passion for you. Because yes. He knows you're not going to walk into the fullness of this thing with all that garbage hanging on you. So He's going to remove it. And He knows you're not going to give it up. You ever, you ever had a young and they get a hold of something you knew was bad for them? Maybe they had a, some kind of a poison spray bottle or something and you had to take it away from them? That baby ain't going to give it up. What would you do? You took it away from them, didn't you? Yeah. You didn't worry about it. You just snapped. Get it! That's it. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I I know Doctor Spock. 
Amen. We're going to try to sit down and talk to our child like they're Harvard graduates. <laughs> and, and they're four years old. <laughs> oh, I gotta quit. I gotta quit. <laughs> Isn't God good? Yes, Let's give the Lord a hand. God bless you. Just a good word. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, Lord. Hallelujah. It surely was a good word. Yes. And uh, I could comment and say certain things, but one thing in particular uh, I ministered, and, and you know, you question sometimes the things that God shows you, yeah. but uh, I still believe. He's still a creator. He's creating yes, us yes, now, yes, even yes, now, yes, in his yes, very own likeness, in his very own yes, image. Yes, but yet, supposedly, he already did it. I got news for us. He's still doing it. Yes, yes. Right. We ain't there yet, but we're well on our way. Right. Hallelujah. Y'all, please stick around. We're going to have dinner served here and uh, fellowship with one another. And uh, we'll please, uh, we'll reconvene here back again tonight at 6 p.m. Um, tell somebody about it. Bring somebody about it. Uh, bring somebody with you. Um, bring yourself back. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, I'll be back tonight. I'll be back. I'll be back. Some of you are scared to say that. I'll be back. I'll be back. I'll be back. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Gary Edison. I think he's my friend. I know he ain't about friends, but <laughs> Gary Edison, will you come and uh, close this officially close this morning's service out and pray over the, the meal? My friend Gary Edison. Yes. You know, one thing about what they say when you come, we all want God to stir up the spirit that's in us. It only comes by the spirit. And I know God has stirred a lot in here, good and bad. Yeah. Yeah. But leave the good outside when you come back. I mean, leave the bad outside the way you do. We don't want to deal with the bad. I thank God for everybody here today. And uh, we just want to exalt Him the rest of the day, even in, even in the, the meal that we serve. We've already had the body, the meal that God served to us this morning. All right, Lord. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this gathering. And it is an end gathering, Lord. Yes. We thank you that you're unifying the body. You're bringing us ever closer to you, Lord. Yes. And let us hear, O oh Lord, let us hear the word of God in and through all these ministries. So that it just not stirs, but it becomes a part of our being, Lord yes. Father. Yes. So that when we get up in the morning, we look in the mirror, we see more of you and less of us, O oh Lord. Yes. So we thank you for that. We thank you for the meal you've served by the Spirit. So now nourish us, Lord, with the natural things. So you can give us life that we can walk more closer to you, Lord. We want to all be like you know, We want to walk with you and be no more. Amen. So we thank you, O Lord, for this day that you have given us. And we bless your most holy name in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, we got, but y'all can go ahead and cut off the live feed. They, they've already cut it off. It's okay. We appreciate everybody viewing. We're going to set up some tables. Uh, I don't know what the.